finite fields. The integers modulo a prime p are not the only types of finite field. In this section, we shall introduce another type of finite field, which is particularly important. At first reading, you may wish to skip this section. We shall only be using these general forms of finite fields when discussing the Rigendale block cipher. A Rigendale block cipher. Stream ciphers based on linear feedback, shift registers, and when we look at elliptic curve based systems. Let's see, we shall only be using these general forms of finite fields when discussing the Rigendale block cipher. Stream ciphers based on linear feedback, shift registers, and when we look at elliptic curve based systems. For this section, we let P denote a prime number. Consider the set of polynomials in X whose coefficients are reduced modulo P. We denote this set F sub P bracket X. Usually this bar notation is used for number systems which forms, so the F with the, um, with this typeface would re represent some uh, number system. Like the real numbers would be an R with that kind of typeface. All right, we denote this set F sub P of X, which forms a ring with the natural definition of addition and multiplication. A particular interest is the case when P equals 2, from which we draw all our examples in this section. For example, in F sub 2 of X, we have 1 plus X plus X squared plus X plus X cubed equals 1 plus X squared plus X cubed. Uh, let's see x plus x is 2x and 2 is 0 in f sub 2. So the x term drops out and that leaves 1 x squared and x cubed. So this this expression is fairly straightforward. All right, And 1 plus x plus x squared times x plus x cubed equals x plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. So this isn't a teaching video, so I'm not actually going to work that out on the screen for you. Uh, eventually, I'd like to do some teaching videos, though, to explain everything. All right, we're in the section on modular arithmetic groups, finite fields, and probability, and we're looking in particular at the finite field section. All right, just as with the integers modulo and number n, where the integers modulo n formed a ring, we can take a polynomial f of x and then the polynomials modulo f of x also forms a ring, also form a ring. We denote this ring by f sub p of x uh, fraction bar f of x and then f sub p of x. Um, this is this division notation is also used for cosets. Or more simply, f sub p of x fraction bar parentheses f of x. Uh, is that to imply this is generated, a set generated by f of x? But to ease notation, we will often write f sub p of x fraction bar f of x. Okay, so at this point, you saw he gave you this, he narrowed it down to this, and then he narrowed it down to this. So when you see this notation, it has compacted and summarized this notation up here. So he's trying to be clear for you, so that later you don't get confused. Okay, so, but to ease notation, we will often write f sub p of x, um, fraction bar f of x, for this latter ring. When f of x equals x to the fourth plus 1 and p equals 2, 
we have, for example, 1 plus x plus x squared times x plus x cubed mod x to the fourth plus 1 equals 1 plus x squared. Since, okay, so here's the explanation, x plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth equals x plus 1 times x to the fourth plus 1. And of course, because you are multiplying by x to the fourth plus 1, this is going to be 0 in this system. So, and that will leave you with the 1 plus x squared that they get up here. When checking, so this is pretty well written, this book, actually. Um, he's pretty clear that you can almost read it. When checking the above equation, but uh, folks, to do math, you have to solve problems. Re remember that. When checking the above equation, and to understand math, you need to solve problems. When checking the above equation, you should remember we are working modulo 2. Recall. When we looked at the integers modulo n, we looked at the equation ax equals b mod n. We can consider a similar question for polynomials. Given a, b, and f, all of which are polynomials in f sub p of x, does there exist a solution alpha to the equation a times alpha equals b mod f? With the integers, the answer depended on the greatest common divisor of a and f, and we counted three possible cases. A similar three cases can occur for polynomials, with the most important one being when a and f are co-prime and so have greatest common divisor equal to 1. A polynomial is called irreducible if it has no proper factors other than itself and the constant polynomials. Hence, irreducibility of polynomials is the same as primality of numbers. Just as with the integers modulo n, when n was prime, we obtained a finite field. So when f of x is irreducible, the ring f sub p of x mod f of x, or f sub p of x divided by f of x, also forms a finite field. Let's see. Irreducibility of polynomials is the same as primality of numbers. You know, in that small statement, hence irreducibility of polynomials is the same as primality of numbers, it actually compacts the fact that you can go from one entire course on just numbers to another entire course that it that is about polynomials. Just as with the integer modulo n, when n was prime, we obtained a finite field. So when f of x is irreducible, the ring f sub p of x slash f of x also forms a finite field. Consider the case p equals 2 and the two different irreducible polynomials. f sub 1 equals x to the 7th plus x plus 1. And f sub 2 equals x to the 7th plus x cubed plus 1. Now consider the two finite fields. f sub 1 equals f2 of x slash f sub 1 of x. Okay, so you're slashing out by this x to the 7th plus x plus 1, right? And f sub 2 equals f sub 2 of x slash f sub 2 of x. So f sub 2 is f sub 2 of x with the x to the 7th plus x cubed plus 1 in the bottom. These both consist of the 2 to the 7th binary polynomials of degree less than 7. Additions in these two fields is identical in that one just adds the coefficients of the polynomials modulo 2. The only difference is in how multiplication is performed. x to the cube plus 1 
times x to the fourth plus 1 mod f sub 1 of x equals x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x. x to the cubed plus 1 times x to the fourth plus 1 mod f sub 2 of x equals x to the fourth. Okay, he showed the multiplication up above. So that's uh, when, you know, the numbers that drop out are the ones that are equivalent to zero, depending on what you mod out by will be what, um, what gives you the, z the zero in that system. And so that's why these reduce like this. So you'll have to look back a little bit to see how we multiplied. And I told you, so where is it? x to the fourth plus one makes your thing zero out, right? That's why you reduce to one plus x squared, the big expression. That is what is probably happening when you're happening when you multiply down here, okay? And that, um, but you know, again, this is not a teaching video. I would need to do this out on a board and we would need to look at it. A natural question arises as to whether these fields are really different or whether they just look different. In mathematical terms, the question is whether the two fields are isomorphic. It turns out that they are isomorphic if there is a map phi from F1 to F2. Let's guess. He's going to say it's a homomorphism that's one to one and odd to. Let's see. So isomorphic if there is a map phi from F1 to F2 called a field isomorphism, or fi isomorphism which satisfies phi of alpha plus beta equals phi of alpha plus phi of beta. So it's a homomorphism over addition, right? And phi of alpha times beta equals phi of alpha times phi of beta. Such an isomorphism exists for every two finite fields. So some of this language goes back to groups. Such an isomorphism exists for every two finite fields of the same order. Although we will not show it here, to describe the map above, you only need to show how to express the root of f sub 2 of x in terms of a polynomial in the root of f sub 1 of x. So let's see, to describe the map above, you need to find a way to express a root of f sub 2 of x in terms of a polynomial in the root of f sub 1 of x. You know, saying the root implies that there's a single root using that language. f sub 2 and f sub 1. The above construction is, in fact, the only way of producing finite fields. Okay, so you'd have to prove that's the only way. Hence, all finite fields are essentially equal to polynomials, modulo a prime, and modulo an irreducible polynomial for that prime. Hence, we have the following basic theorem. I would love to uh, do a video on Galois theory, irreducible polynomial. All right, um, theorem 1.6. There is, up to isomorphism, just one finite field of each prime power order. So by up to isomorphism, he means that basically for each prime power, all those fields are going to turn out structurally identical, even though the objects may look different, or the elements. The notation we use for these fields is either f sub q or g of f of q. Either uh, f sub q or g f of q with q equals p to the d, where d is the degree of the irreducible polynomial used to construct the finite field. 
we of course have f sub p equals f sub p of x slash x. The notation gf of q means the Galois field of q elements. Ah, you see the word Galois there. Finite fields are sometimes named after the 19th century French mathematician Galois. Galois had an interesting life. He accomplished most of his scientific work at an early age before dying in a duel. Very true, and uh, Galois theory is not totally easy to understand. It takes quite a bit of work. There's a very nice book by a guy named Gaul, I think, G-A-A-L, that helps you get into Galois theory. There are a number of technical definitions associated with finite fields, which we need to cover. Each finite field, K, contains a copy of the integers modulo P for some prime P. We call this prime the characteristic of the field. Okay. Finite field K contains a copy of the integers modulo P. P is the prime, uh, this prime is the characteristic of the field, and often write this as C-H-A-R-K. That's the character of the field K. The subfield of, so C-H-A-R-K is the character of K, which is a prime A copy of the integers modulo p for some prime p. The subfield of integers modulo p of a finite field is called the prime subfield. There is a map v called the pth power, Frobenius map, defined for any finite field. Uh, notice that's a capital V. Uh, the pth power Frobenius map. Okay, so in this notation, phi, and he's defining the map with the bracket, where f sub q is taken back to itself, f sub q, and elements alpha, you notice this little line here, each individual element alpha is mapped to alpha to the power p. So they're telling you how to do it here. Where p is the characteristic, so p is the exponent of those elements. Where p is the characteristics, characteristic of f sub q. The Frobenius map is an isomorphism of f sub q with itself. Well, obviously, f sub q to f sub q, right? But you have to prove it's an isomorphism. Such an isomorphism is called an automorphism. Uh, yes. An interesting property is that the set of elements fixed by the Frobenius map is the prime field, i.e. alpha in f sub q such that alpha to the p equals alpha. That is f sub p. So basically it's when you map something to itself and you get it back again, right? Notice that this is a kind of generalization of Fermat's little theorem. I guess people usually say Fermat to finite fields. So it's a generalization of Fermat's little theorem to finite fields. For any automorphism chi of a finite field, the set of elements fixed by chi is a field called the fixed field of chi. Hence the previous statement says that the fixed field of the Frobenius map is the prime field f sub p. Not only does f sub q contain a copy of f sub p, but f sub p to the d contains a copy of f sub p to the e for every value of e dividing d. In addition, f sub p to the e is the fixed field of the automorphism capital F to the E, i.e., okay, here they define it, for all alpha in F sub P to the D, um, we do alpha to the P to the E equals alpha, and that is 
basically uh, f sub p to the e. Yeah, you're raising everything to the p to the e, and it keeps those alphas fixed, right? So it's the fixed field of the automorphism where you take everything and raise it to p to the e. Mm -hmm. F sub p to the e is the fixed field of the automorphism. Boy, this whole book actually looks like a lot of stuff would need to be worked out on a board here to show people. Another interesting property is that if P is the characteristic of F sub Q, then if we take any element alpha in F sub Q and add it to itself P times, we obtain zero. E.g. in F sub 49. Okay, so another interesting property is that P is the characteristic of F sub Q. Uh, that if p is the characteristic of f sub q, then if we take any element alpha in f sub q and add it to itself p times, we obtain zero. If we take any element alpha in f sub q, add it to itself p times, we obtain zero. So in f sub 49, we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you add x to itself 7 times. So you have 7x. And that's going to be 0 mod 7. The non-zero elements of a finite field usually denoted f sub q to the star. Usually star represents 0 taken out. Oh yeah, so non-zero, right? Form, so duh. Form a cyclic finite abelian group cyclic so it's generated by an element we call a generator of f sub q to the star a primitive element in the finite field such primitive elements always exist and so the multiplicative group is always cyclic in other words there always exists an element g in f sub q such that every non-zero element alpha can be written as alpha equals g to the x for some integer value of x. As an example, consider the field of eight elements defined by f sub 2 to the third equals f sub 2 of x slash x to the third plus x plus 1 in parentheses. So f sub 2 to the third, 2 to the third is 8, f sub 2 of x uh, sometimes I say mod when I see this slash. Parentheses, x to the third plus x plus 1. Now we went over this parentheses notation above. Um, and often the parentheses indicates that um, it's generated by the polynomial. Over the coefficients of a given, um, given field, right? In this field, there are seven non-zero elements, namely 1, <clears throat> 1, alpha, alpha plus 1, alpha squared, alpha squared plus 1, alpha squared plus alpha, and alpha squared plus alpha plus 1, where alpha is a root of x cubed plus x plus 1. We see that alpha is a primitive element in f sub 2 to the third, since alpha to the 1 equals alpha, alpha squared equals alpha squared, alpha cubed equals alpha plus 1, alpha to the fourth equals alpha squared plus alpha, alpha to the fifth equals alpha squared plus alpha plus 1, alpha to the sixth equals alpha squared plus 1, alpha to the seventh equals 1. Notice this stuff needs to be played around with uh, to really see it. Notice that for a prime p, this means that the integers modulo or prime also have a primitive element. Since z mod p, pz, z slash pz equals f sub p is a finite field. 
So the prime, for a prime p, this means that the integers modulo or prime also have a primitive element, since z slash pz equals f sub p is a finite field.